What's up everybody, Dante here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, subscribe, like my videos. If you do, like them, hit that like button. If you don't, also hit that like button. And leave comments in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think about my content I'm building on this channel. Having said that, let me start off with this. 2020 has been an up and down year for pretty much everybody. But some things I purchased in 2020 that I kind of say that made my production and audio production, video production a whole lot easier. And just pretty much some things that I bought that kind of was personal enjoyment for me. So let me start off with the list that I have for 2020, the things I bought in 2020 that I pretty much love. Now, they're not in no order as the one, the best of them all or nothing like that. It's just five things I bought this year that I really like and really enjoy. So let me get into this list. First, let me start off with my... LG C9 OLED TV. Now, going to Best Buy, you see all these fancy TVs and things like that. But when you actually have an OLED screen in your household and you're watching content that kind of like designed to show you what a true picture and true blacks look like as far as 4K content, you look at displays a totally different way. If you have an LCD display and then you look at an OLED screen, once you get a taste of that OLED, it's something totally different. It just changes your whole perspective as far as... Uh, display when it comes to a TV. Now, you'll see the little differences as far as LCD and OLED. With LCD, you see this little halo effect when it comes to like white lettering or white images on the screen, depending on like the setting of the, uh, the scene that you're watching. You'll see like these little blurry little halo effects. With OLEDs, you don't have that. So you don't see those halo effects around letters and all these type of uh, like if you got a moon, you might see a halo effect around the moon or something like that in the scene. And if you got deep blacks, you'll see the deep blackness of in, in OLEDs. When it comes to LCDs, you'll see like the graininess, the choppiness in certain scenes when it comes to like dark blacks. So when it, my first OLED display was an LG C9. I must say, LG makes some of the best panels out there. So to get me one this year was a blessing and uh, makes me look at displays totally different now. It's like everything I want now is OLED. So one, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, CG... The LG, sorry, C9, this OLED, the TVs, if you get get yourself one, treat yourself to one if you can afford one. Best TVs you're going to buy. Just OLEDs, period, but the LG has some of the best panels out there, so I would definitely recommend getting the LG OLED TV. Next up, early part of the year, Apple released the new MacBook Airs with the new keyboards and all that stuff. So I actually got me one, did a uh, first impressions video of it and all these things, and I must say, for that laptop... To kind of get a new keyboard, kind of like an old traditional keyboard somewhat. It was great to the establishment when it came to, you know, helping out with the podcast mostly. I mostly edit my podcast on this um, MacBook Air. I don't really do heavy 4K editing on my MacBook Air. I didn't, I didn't really purchase that. But but I must say the Retina display was great to see. You know, some new thin bezels when it came to the uh Retina display and upgrade to that display because I have some old MacBook Airs and that display was terrible for the longest period of time. What was one of Apple's best selling Macs? They never really upgraded that display. Not even to a 1080p. It was 1440 for like the longest. So when they got the new MacBook Airs out there to redesign, new keyboards, new displays, it was great. Like I said, I use it mostly to edit my podcast. I don't really use it for video editing. Which you probably can do, but it will be very annoying, very taxing on that computer. So I wouldn't recommend editing 4K or anything higher than that. But 1080p, you should be good. But for the most part, this laptop was great to the establishment. That helped out with everything when it comes to this channel. Next up is a little bit of a game changer for me. Uh, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos when it comes to like microphones. And a lot of radio shows, podcasts use this microphone. I had to add this to the establishment and the short sm7b now this ain't a brand new microphone i think it's like 14 years old if i'm not mistaken it may be older or maybe younger than that but this microphone i believe is the best microphone you could just buy right out the box because you don't really need nothing else to it i'm sorry yes you do you'll need a cloud lift to do it because this is a very soft microphone i actually when i was telling somebody when i was doing like a, a review of it what i was saying is this microphone is very a soft sounding microphone so you need this Cloud lifter or fathead, whatever you want to get, to kind of boost it. It's like a it's like a mini amplifier that helps boost the signal. Now, also you got to be careful with that. You can't have the gain up too high with those because you can blow the microphones out. I used to work in uh, the prison system where you kind of had to uh, 
replace some of the uh, PA systems. And sometimes they'd be having the gain up so high, it will blow the microphones out in certain blocks. So if you have the gain up too high on these type of microphones, you can blow them out. But that's what cloud lifters do. It kind of limit you turn up the gain so high, but some people still do it. But you don't have to turn it up as high when it comes to using the cloud lifter. But having this microphone was great because you put it in and you just start recording. And it's a great sound of microphone, depending on what device you use also helps. I use my Zoom H6 with the cloud lifter and it's like the preamps in that is great. So, but if you have the Zoom H and 4, it don't sound as good. I've, I've played back audio on that and the Zoom H6 and it was just a two totally different sound when it came to recording with that microphone. So depending on what recorder you use, it also determines how the sound is going to actually come out when it comes to the short SM7B. But that was a great mic I added to to my uh, audio setup. I use it for my podcast all the time. I have an ARM and a uh, Rodecaster Pro. Use it for my podcast. Great sounding microphone. I'm I'm still debating if I want to add video to my um podcast because me and my co-host we kind of got this virtual distance. Um, host thing going on right now because of what's going on in the world and she has asthma and I don't want to put her at risk at any type of you know medical complications when it comes to interacting with somebody and catching something so I try to limit that but like I said adding this to my podcast and my audio setup was great definitely recommend anybody get it if you want to start a podcast, definitely, definitely recommend that microphone. Or even if you just do voiceover work or just you need a microphone for your video production as far as, you know, helping with your YouTube videos. And also remember the kind of um, recorder you use with this. You know, it depends. You know, that determines a lot of what sound you're going to get out of it. Now, it's a great sound of microphone, but if you have a lousy recorder, it don't matter how good that microphone is, it's still a lousy recorder. Next up is the Sony... WH-1000XM4s. Now, I had the XM3s. Love those headphones. Love them. I love the way they sound. Some people say they're too bass heavy, but I like that when it comes to playing a certain music that I like. So, for me, I love it for that. But the XM4s, one of the big differences was you can multi-device switch between whatever you're doing. But there is a little hiccup with that. Sometimes you have to keep doing it over and over so i use my ipad pro and i'll use my iphone i'll listen to a podcast on my iphone and want to switch over and watch youtube videos on my ipad pro now once you set it up it's fine but sometimes it doesn't recognize it right away so you gotta re uh pair it every time and then once you repair it and set it up it's fine but it doesn't like if you turn the headphones off and turn them back on they'll have you have to do that process all over but Overall, those headphones were great. Sound quality was still the same. And it just gave me an extra feature that allows me to change between two devices. Which always helps when you come to switching from an iPad Pro to your iPhone. Your iPhone to your iPad Pro or your MacBook, whatever. Or whatever you got that hooked up to. You can kind of switch between the two seamlessly with no problem. And what more can I say? I like the way they sound. Some people don't. I do. And having, having the ability to switch between two devices... Helped out a lot, and I really like these headphones for 2020. Now, the final thing on this list is, for some people, may be like, why is that so a big thing for you? For me, it was because I've had a couple of tripods, and they work for the most part, but there's certain things I wanted to do and kind of spice up my videos and change things up a little bit. So, when I got the Manfrotto tripod with the fluid head and be able to get panning-type shots... It stepped my game up a little bit, still working on it, trying to get better shots and just determine how I want to shoot a certain product at the time and what angle I want to do with that. It's just that determines on the fluid head and just certain angles I want to do. And plus, I have a camcorder. That's not the best thing to try to get when you're doing product reviews of things. You kind of want a lens that can kind of zoom in and get certain angles of that product. So, but adding that to, you know, my video production and having a slider too. To kind of get those panning shots from side to side, a little smoothness of it. So it helped out a lot, like I said, but it really limited me in the situation because of the camcorder I'm using. Because I need a camera that has a different type of lens so I can get certain shots that I can't get with this camcorder, you know, for the most part. But adding, you know, this other actual, the tripod I'm using here is a Manfrotto Manopod that 
right now works perfectly set up ready to go you can see i'm using my light here you can't see the shotgun mic that's under it but this is a perfect setup for like a roll type shots and it works perfectly so i'm gonna keep this in the establishment just for that but when i get my hands on a new camera with some um interchangeable lenses and get different angles of product reviews or angles i want to shoot out when i'm outdoors or something like that or whatever i'm doing at the time that kind of change it up and kind of improve the quality of my videos that will help out a lot so adding that to my you know repertoire as far as the tripod the slider you know some manopods and like all these other things it helped out a lot as far as my video production just getting better at what i want to do and what i enjoy doing and just making better videos each time i make a video and that's my list of things that I bought in 2020 that made my, that changed my life a little bit. It wasn't a game changer as far as like changed my life to the extreme, but it made things a lot easier for me and helped me improve my video quality and audio quality too. Can't 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 forget that. Like audio quality is just as important as video, because if you got lousy audio but great video, people will say that about your video. But you have great audio and okay video. They'll say, well, the, the audio sounds great, but the video could be, could be, I mean, it's the same thing. The video could be a little work, but overall, 2020 was an up and down year for everybody. But for me, I found a couple of things this year that actually helped me out and improve my videos and everything when it came to this YouTube space we have here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.